Hi, and welcome to The Stair Tailored. I'm Erica Mason from the University of Missouri. And today, we're gonna to talk about one of a four-part series on how to multiply linear expressions. Today's video is going to be about using algebra blocks. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about multiple representations, which is really uh, what this algebra blocks video is about. So uh, in her article in 2017, Tricia Strickland describes the CRAI model, and that stands for Concrete Representational Abstract Integrated. You might also have heard that as Concrete Pictorial Abstract, and really those two are the same idea. The reason we're introducing this here is so that we can understand that when students have the opportunity to represent mathematics using multiple representations, they're really having increased opportunities for sense making. This is particularly important for students with mathematics difficulty, including those with disabilities, because it gives students uh, a good variety of tools with which to make sense of the mathematics. In that 2017 article, Strickland identifies the CRAI model as a really useful process to help students not only gain some procedural fluency, but also attend to some conceptual understanding when trying to multiply um, linear expressions. Um, we're today gonna model how she models using these blocks. Um, we're using blocks that come from algebra lab gear, but really any algebra blocks you have would be fine. While some teachers might get really excited to introduce some manipulatives to students, we would encourage you to first take some time to introduce students to the actual materials and let them have a chance to make sure that they understand how to use them appropriately and to really clarify what mathematical relationships are being represented in the tools. So these algebra blocks have three main components that we're gonna talk about today. This blue bar here represents the variable x. This square here represents the variable x squared. And then these little yellow cubes represent any sort of integer constant. There are some really common misconceptions that students might have when using these tools, so it's important to give them the opportunity to explore with them and then to clarify. So it's really easy for students to think that three integer constants equal this one x variable. And so students might think that this represents 3x, for example, or the value 3, but that's actually not true. So it's important to clarify that this blue bar can represent the variable x, which can stand for any value. It's important when introducing these materials to give students the chance to see some examples. So first, you might show students how to create the expression x plus 3. So to do that, you're going to use the x bar and three integer constants. This represents the expression x plus three. This corner piece actually represents the mathematical relationship that you get when you multiply, right? So when you put blocks here and here, those actually become the two factors that you're multiplying and anything that's formed inside the corner piece is the product. So for example, you might show students how to multiply two times five so you might put two integer constants there and five integer constants here. You then can show students how these two factors really set the boundaries for what you're going to multiply. That is, this is an established value five and this is an established value two. So then when you go to fill in the product, you're going to look for two things. First, that your product fits within the boundaries of those factors, and also that your product makes a rectangle. So let's look at that. So you can see here, we've modeled the relationship two times five. You see two, one factor here, and five, one factor here, and inside is the product 10. This is also a really fun opportunity to talk to students about the commutative property of multiplication. That is, if we switched it to be five times two, that our product is actually still the same. As you can see, by using these concrete manipulatives, students actually get to see the mathematics. And the sign of a strong representation is that it represents the mathematical relationship 
accurately and that it makes it really evident or clear to students. So in this example, we're representing the multiplicative relationship between two integers. And so you can ask students to reason about whether or not they've represented this correctly by pointing out this rectangle. And so students might wonder, well, why am I always going to get a rectangle? So you could invite students to think about that relationship. What does multiplication actually mean? So in conversation, you might come up with the definition that multiplication means groups of. So in this example, it can mean two groups of five or five groups of two. Let's say students are trying to model this relationship, but they end up creating a representation that looks like this. This is an awesome opportunity to ask students, again, what does it mean to multiply? And then how is that reflected in our representation? So again, if this factor and this factor define the boundaries of our problem, this little guy falls outside of that boundary. So what does that mean? If students want to reason about whether or not this represents groups of, you can say, do you see two groups of five? Well, no, actually, I see one group of six and one group of five. Oh, wait, that's modeling a different kind of relationship and not the relationship between two times five. Thanks for watching The Stair Tailored. Make sure to check out part two of this series, which is when we should demonstrate how to multiply linear expressions with positive terms.